So there was a thing that, and uh, uh, my part in in writing this book was uh, I interviewed something like thirty five worker mm -hmm. cooperators, yeah. you know, current ones and ones all the way back into the into the seventies, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a repeated story, you know, or element of uh, uh, the stories were all unique, but there was this constant you know, a, th a story that would come through, and that is the the surprise that when someone joined the worker cooperative, that they were coming in with this employee-employer mindset, yeah. Yeah. and they they were just disoriented. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, what is, I mean, how do I, uh, 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 who's in, you know, yeah. and the time that it took, to move out of that mentality into, I am an owner, but I'm not an owner like it. But there is that fundamental learning of changing yeah. that yeah. mindset we've all set up with. Grow up. What kind of job you, are you going to have a career? What mm -hmm. kind of job are you going to have? And either I'm going to be an employer, I'm going to be an employee. Yeah. And it's a whole new world. It's a whole new game. Yeah. yeah. And one of the other ones that was was that this you constantly have to learn your business. Mm -hmm. The business is always changing, yeah. you know, circumstances, you got to be constantly learning how, what's going on and, you know, mm -hmm. and at the same time, contrary to other businesses, there's the democracy track of learning mm -hmm. and that that's ongoing. Mm -hmm. It's constant yeah. because we weren't raised to relate to each other democratically. Yeah. Now, what mm -hmm. do you have that focus yeah. in your co-op program, your co-op education program? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, we do. And that's part of operationalizing the cooperative principles is how do you build in healthy communication practices, um, the, the, those feedback loops um, to allow people to really have that voice in, in their business, you know. And so I think um, and from the legal side and what we are trying to do is, uh, you know, with operating agreements and bylaws that are that are created for businesses to really write them in an like a, a way that people actually will engage with the content. Right now, the legalese mm -hmm. is just like heretofore mumbo jumbo. When some when a new Whereas. employee or worker oh, like picks that up after a page, they're just tired of it. No and so, <laughs> so what we're trying to do is write bylaws and operating agreements that in, that include the cooperative principles and those feedback mechanisms and those types of things in a way that is engaging that people will actually read it. And so, right. at least. On that intellectual level, they'll be able to understand it a little bit better. But I think, honestly, um, well, and everybody learns differently. Myself, I'm a kinesthetic learner. I learn by doing. And so being part of a cooperative or democratic organization is really how I came to know how to how cooperative culture works. And so having compliments and different ways for people to learn and understand the cooperative culture is, I think, really important. So, yeah. I've been in uh, uh, Ghana's. Uh, was not founded as an intentional community. Hmm. It was founded for the purpose of uh, six or seven of us had been in various projects, mm -hmm. uh, you know, different kinds that were mm -hmm. very exciting. They all fell apart because yeah. as soon as problems came up between people, yeah. there was either withdrawal or attack, mm -hmm. and then everything would just deteriorate. Yeah. And yeah. decisions, would, if, if it didn't fall apart, the decisions were being made behind a closed door yeah. and all the Chit chat was around yeah. the water cooler yeah. was really nasty stuff, yeah. and that's and that's I think like. Um, but I, I just I, I, sorry, I, yeah. yeah respond, can you, it took me twenty years <laughs> okay. yeah. to really really get it, you yeah. know, yeah. and to really get. I mean, to make a major shift. I, I mean, I came in as a as, as a as a real total alpha male, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, whose life wasn't really working that well. So I knew something was wrong. Yeah. But I was supposed to be leading the charge to a better world and all of that, and mm -hmm. I knew where it was going to go. Right. <laughs> I had so much unlearning to do. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, 12 weeks is yeah. not a lot, so go ahead. Yeah, no, and that's, I mean, I think with um, where sort of a lot of people who come into cooperatives, uh, you know, I think a lot of people come from the political left, let's say, if we want to use that. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of, history there to, to draw upon and one thing that we draw upon at Selk is this this um, paper that was written called The Tyranny of Structurelessness and it was written by a feminist uh, author um, 
back in the 70s talking about how she was part of organizations where they intentionally said there's no leaders, there's no hierarchy, that we're all equal. And so uh, what ended up happening was that there was these, um, that because you couldn't explicitly say like, no, you're the leader right now, the people would say, I'm not the leader, we're all equal. But at the same time, people with stronger personalities would come in and start to push things, you know, and so you start having these really unhealthy dynamics. And so it's it's that structurelessness that that really creates sort of these tyrannies of oppression that you can't even exactly. speak about and so what we really are intentional about doing is creating structure that allows for people to awesome. be to have their voices heard and also to express themselves in different ways so that you can you can have healthy communication with an organization and continue to move forward so okay yeah one last question uh Zoe Tucker is writing up a, a report. What, what's the what's the objective of the reports that she's going to be writing? Yeah, so um, so there are seven teams that came through our Worker Co-op Academy, and she's going to be interviewing um, each one of them to sort of get what their experience was, um, and the, so the story about how the academy impacted them as an organization and um, helped them move from where they were before to where they are now. But it's also to talk about each individual organization because these are these are businesses that um, really people have some strong some strong passion behind why they're doing this type of business, and so it's to to highlight why these people got into these different areas. I remember one of the academy it's participants. Like get their story. Yeah, to get their story. Yeah. Okay. And so one of the academy participants, it was really revealing. She'd been she's been an activist her entire life, and she said that the most revolutionary thing that she's done is working in this cooperative. Wow. You know, and so, and that's, and it's, it's sort of, uh, you know, maybe we're, maybe that's a little hyperbolic or something, but really it's for people, for people, everyday lives who they're working, they're, the majority of their waking lives is at work. And so to work in a workplace where you're flipping capitalism on its head to say that no labor is not a tool of capital, but capital is a tool of labor is a revolutionary act that we can do every day in our lives. So, right, yeah. that's very much the story of building cooperative power. Yeah, it's, and it, it's it's like, well, you you read it, so you yeah, if thank you're you telling very me much. That, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I really appreciate all the case studies that you bring to light and the the stories of the people and how. For me, you know, I'm looking at it from a legal perspective and how the law has impacted, hurt or help, and mm -hmm. hurt or help these uh, these cooperatives. And I've already done um, a few trainings where I've drawn upon the stories and building cooperative power to say this is how not to do it, and this is <laughs> this is some lessons right. learned that that's, we can use. Yeah. That's one of the subtitles of, of it is uh, stories and strategies. But we, whenever we talked among ourselves about the stories, it was like there's the cautionary tale <laughs> yeah, and yeah. there's the inspiring tale. We need yeah. both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. We do. We can't be okay. afraid of failure because. And then yeah. is is uh, it is the uh, the works we're going to do? Is, is it also going to provide you guys with feedback on mm -hmm. what you didn't get done or yeah. what was missed or what yeah. hadn't? Yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. There's you know because we did uh, we did some mostly quantitative feedback where we were, you know, we asked uh, all the participants a series of questions just to get feedback on what they thought of the academy, where we didn't provide enough resources, what we couldn't improve upon, those types of things. But really when you look at it qualitatively, it's, it's great because you can have a number value or something, mm -hmm. but to have these narratives, to have, um, you know, more qualitative instead of quantitative is really, is really a rich place for us to, to move forward and keep building this academy. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. We did it. He's got to leave very soon. <laughs> well, because Michael's going to talk tonight. At our, I'm doing a book presentation that he set up. Yeah, at our Resilient Communities Legal Cafe, which happens three times a month in Berkeley, Oakland, and Richmond, where we provide legal advice to cooperative entrepreneurs and nonprofits and social social entrepreneurs. So come on by. And he's the coordinator. Yeah. Um, so, and uh, Gio is going to be doing more of these, I hope, and come and visit. Yeah. And we'll be publishing the articles that Zoe's working on with right. Geo. So right. Right. all of Geo's, and um, that's the beginning of the. Uh, I hope that's going to be the beginning of the serious maximum uh, cooperative ed theme that we just want to run on an ongoing basis because mm -hmm. it's core to the whole development of the movement. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.